I don't very often come out and talk to you about the differences between crop sensor and full frame sensor sort of professional level cameras and more sort of prosumer, top end sort of beginner cameras. So I thought you probably ought to have a little chat about it because I know lots of people are interested and have asked lots of questions. So what have we got here? Well, we've got two kits and I like both and they're both mine. So like, I really like this kit and I really like this kit. But what's the difference? Well, this is my old D300. It's a crop sensor camera. I've had it for ages. You've probably seen it in masses and masses of films. Um, it's performed brilliantly. Why did I buy a crop sensor camera? It's because, why not? It's kind of, when I first got into uh, digital photography, they weren't really full frame DSLRs. They're only crop sensor. I already got crop sensor lenses, so that's really what I went with. Um, also, when I spoke to my friend Adam Scorey, who's a group editor for Archant Photography Magazines, and said, what should I buy? He said, yeah, it'd be a great camera. Just go and buy one. Just get on with it. And I'm lazy. I can't be bothered to do research. That's really why I ended up with a crop sensor camera. And so long as the pictures are great, I don't care. I'm happy. So on the D300, I've got my 18 to 70 uh, F. 5.6 zoom which is a stonkingly good little lens it has done really really well it came as part of a kit on a d70 very very inexpensive you can pick them up on ebay for next to nothing these days but they're very very good i got the 70 to 210 my old 70 to 210 zoom now this is actually off a of full frame it's from 35 millimeter days but it's still a stonking lens and i've used it on my digitals for a long long time because why go out and spend more money if you don't need to it's a great little outfit 18 to 200 millimeters all covered deal done over here we got the d600 body full frame sensor more megapixels don't know how many if you're worried about it go and look it up i'm sorry it doesn't interest me enough um, on the front of that i've got the 24 to 70 f 2.8 nickel zoom expensive piece of glass very very nice lens and next to it, I've got the 70 to 200 f 2.8 nickel zoom. This is the uh, this is the VR. It's not the VR2. It's not the second version. It's the earlier version. All full frame, good stuff. So there are pros and cons to this. What's what's what are the pros and cons? Well, let's start over here with the full frame stuff first. Well, one is by having full frame and a wide 2.8 aperture, you have got a much, much shallower depth of field. So there's less depth of field. Why is less depth of field good? If you want to get a blurry background and really, really focus in on something so that it stands out in the shot, less depth of field is a good thing. Having a bigger sensor and more megapixels and a better ISO performance, which this has, combined with the wider aperture means it's really great for shooting in low light levels. I can get away with much, much lower light levels and still have a nice steady shot without having to resort to flash using this outfit than I can with this one. That's probably about it on the upside as far as I'm concerned. I'm sure there are many of you that would think, oh, there must be many more technical reasons, but I'm really only interested in what I can do with it to achieve the pictures I want. What about the pros of, of this set? Well, we just said that one of the pros of that is less depth of field. One of the pros of this is more depth of field. You've got a smaller sensor. You've got a little bit more depth of field going on. So. Why is that good if it was bad somewhere else? It's not so much good and bad, but if you want more depth of field, maximum depth of field, a smaller sensor could easily help you achieve that, particularly when you use it with a smaller aperture, you know, a high F number. That's, that's one of the pros. Of course, obviously, the, one of the really big pros of this is you're not going to have to mortgage your children in order to buy it. You know, it isn't going to leave a big dent in your wallet. You can still go on holiday and do stuff like that. There's not much to choose between the two. Why did I upgrade? Because this is well, well hammered and technology moves on and even a Luddite like me has to move with that technology. Otherwise, you just get left behind. You start to find that image files won't work in new software. You can't open things. You start to have problems with conflicts like that. So yeah, it's time to move on. And I needed a camera that wasn't completely shagged and worn out. There are things about both which I like. So one of the things, say, with the 2.8 lens, as I was saying, you can get a very shallow depth of field. Now, I have to make this film as quickly as possible because Lorna's sitting over there filming me. Her back is hurting. That happens to all camera operators, doesn't it, Lorna? She's got a very, very stern look on her face. And look at the size of this lump of cake. Have you ever seen such a whopper? And Lorna wants to eat it with her coffee. And I'm going to have some too. But first, let me just show you what I mean. So let's say I want to take... Let me just compare briefly 
um, the difference between the lenses. And I'm not going into which takes a better picture. We've already done a film about that. Will you get a better picture out of a four and a half thousand pound camera and lens than you will out of a, you know, cheapy old clunker? We've made that film. There's a link under in the text below and, and on screen at the moment if you want to go and check it out. So I'm not going into that territory. But let's say I just want to take a little close up shot. I like the colourful cups. I like the bit of cake. Let's say I want to do something like that. So let's start with the shorter lens. Let's just stick it at about 50 millimetres. Let's say I want to take a shot and I want to get like the edge of this cut. No, let's say I want to go, yeah, edge of the cup sharp and the stuff behind soft. So let's just see what I can do. Now I can get in here and I can focus in to about here and I've got f2.8 and I've got the foam on the coffee sharp and pretty much everything else is soft. So I've got that lovely kind of soft thing. What happens if I try the same thing using the crop sensor and the consumer lens? Do the same thing, about 70 millimeters. Here I was using f2.8 because I've got the wider aperture with this camera. I'm using 5.6 on here. Sorry, I'm not, I'm using, uh, yeah, I am 5.6. Let's see what happens. Can I still focus at the same distance? Now, smaller sensor, making the lens seem a bit longer. So I'm gonna move back a bit. Here we go. I'm going to do this one level. I'm not going to tilt the camera so you can see the two shots. Let's go in a bit closer. Focus, focus. I think that is roughly the shot I took. Let me just have a quick look. Yeah, very similar shots. You can see when you compare them, there is slight as a softer background using the D600 than there is with the D300, but the shots are very, very, very similar. It's kind of like, is the extra price worth it? What happens if we put a longer lens on? Let's just see what happens, because there is a downside to the full frame, in my opinion. Let's just put our 70 to 200 on. Thanks, guys. And, they're not thanking me because I actually made the move. They're such nice people. I said, I'm sorry, we're about to start filming. They're thanking the cafe. Now, put that on there. Forgive me, guys. Now, something which a lot of photographers, I notice, do is they're very, very anti-changing lenses to get shots. Now, sometimes you've got to change your lens to get the shot that you want. Don't be lazy. If you need to change your lens to get something, just get on and do it. Look, it didn't take that long, did it? I've just changed two lenses on two different cameras. Let's have a go at the same sort of shot. Let's see if we can get in fairly close with the coffee and the cake and all the rest of it. First off, let's use the long lens. Now, this to me is a big downside. Sometimes they hunt. It's difficult to focus them because things are really, really soft when you're using 2.8. Let me just see. Now, I want to get a nice close shot Right, already, I can't focus there. I can't get close enough to compose the shot I want. I don't want that in it, so I'm moving it. So I'm gonna come back here. Where can I be to focus? I gotta come all the way back here before I can focus the camera in the place I want it. Have I got that focused? It's still not focusing. It can be tricky. There we go, let's go with that shot there. It looks very, very similar to the shot I just took with the other lens, didn't it? But that's not the shot I want. The shot I want, I can achieve with this camera. Because this one will let me focus in a lot, lot closer. This time I'm gonna tilt the other way so that you can see I'm not cheating. I'm gonna change the angle. We're gonna go coffee cup to coffee cup with a bit of cake in the corner. Maybe, here we go. Let's go a bit higher. Look, you look how much closer in I can focus. I'm not going to tilt it. I'm going to tilt it again because the shot just looks horrid if I don't. Look, I can fill the frame with the cup and this lens will focus in closer. So it's a case of weighing up the cost and what it's worth to you. Image files, colours, things like that. You're going to have better colours, you're going to have you're going to have nicer quality image files out of the more expensive camera, but are you going to notice the difference? If your pictures are just looked at online or something like that, there's a tiny difference you may or may not notice it. If we compare a couple of these on screen now, I don't know if in the video you can see the difference between 
the consumer prosumer camera and the expensive camera and lens. If you want to check it out, go to my website. There's a link on screen and in the text below the video. You can go and download these files and look at them yourself so you can kind of compare them. But with the expensive camera, there will be nicer colours. You will get better image quality and sharpness at extremities like very small apertures and very long focal lengths. With the expensive kit, that's what you're paying for. But is it going to be enough difference to justify the cost? As I say, we got, what, three and a half thousand pounds, I guess, here, something like that. Possibly more, depending whether you're buying new or second hand, versus about 750 quid going on here. I'm not saying one's bad, because I'm always talking about using the cheaper kit. And I'm not saying it's bad and wrong, and it's, 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 it's not a good thing to buy expensive stuff. I'm just saying don't sell your soul to the devil to buy it because you're better off to upgrade the photographer and understand how to use the tools that you have than to go rushing off and buy something more expensive and invest thousands of pounds because you may well be disappointed because as you can see there isn't a huge difference between the images taken by either of those that's just something i wanted to touch on so as i say guys you can download these image files yourself go and have a look um, they're just jpegs and i'm leaving them at full size full resolution so you can sort of see the size difference the pixels make etc I hope that was of value to you. I know it was a bit waffly, but that's because I want to eat some cake and swig on some coffee. See you later, guys. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to be notified each time we upload one of our cool photography videos. Or for more great photo tips, workshops, and training, come and see us at our website, photographycourses.biz.